Today our learning target is writing equations in point-slope form. So the point-slope form is a really easy form to use if you know the m, or the slope, and a given point that the line goes through. Point-slope form is y minus y sub 1 equals m times x minus x sub 1. An example would be y minus 3 equals 4 times x minus 2, where we can pull out our slope, which is 4, and our point, 2 and 3. If this had been y plus 3 and x plus 2, that would have meant that it passed through a negative 2, negative 3, because x minus a negative 2 is plus 2, for example. So let's do some examples. Here, example A, we have a point negative 14, negative 8, and the slope is 4 fifths. Negative 14 is our x sub 1, negative 8 is our y sub 1. So y minus y sub 1, which is a negative 8, so I'm going to change that to plus 8, equals my slope, which is 4 fifths, times x minus a negative 14 minus a negative 14 is plus 14. And I'm done. A very common mistake is then putting this into slope-intercept form. Putting it into slope-intercept form is great if it's an application problem or if that's what it's called for. But sometimes we need to leave it in point-slope form just to make sure that you understand which form is the point-slope form. So on an assessment, if it asks for point-slope form, you are done at this point. Another example. Here is my point. Here is my slope. So y minus, this is my y sub 1, so minus 3 equals my slope, which is negative 2, times x minus, this is my x sub 1, negative 1, so x plus 1. Again, if it's asked if the directions say to write something in point-slope form, you are done. You are going to leave it just like this. As with slope-intercept form, sometimes you're not given everything you need. Like in this example, A, we're given just the ordered pair. So we have to first find the slope, because to write something in point-slope form, you need a point and you need a slope. So we have to find the slope. So remember, that is the change in y over the change in x. So 7 minus 4 over 5 minus a negative 4. 7 minus 4 is 3. 5 minus a negative 4 is 9. So my slope is 1 third. And I can use either of these points. I'm going to choose that one, the first one, 5, 7. So y minus 7 equals 1 third times x minus 5. And I'm done. This is my answer. This is where I'm going to stop unless it specifies that you need to, to write it in slope-intercept form. All right, the next example. This is a, an equation for a line that passes through negative 1, 3, but is perpendicular to this equation. So what we know about perpendicular lines is that their slopes are opposite reciprocals. So if my slope is negative 2, a line that is perpendicular to that, it's negative, so my new slope is positive. This is 2, so my new slope is 1 half. It's reciprocal. So now I have my slope and I have my point. So y minus 3, because this is y sub 1, equals my new slope of 1 half times x minus a negative 1, so x plus 1. And again, I am done if I want it, uh, an equation in point-slope form. Okay, there are going to be times, however, where you need to write the equation in slope-intercept form. If the directions say to leave it in point-slope form, you're going to leave it like this. But if it says that it needs to be in slope-intercept form, you have a little bit of work to do. First, we need to use the distributive property to get rid of the parentheses. So 3 times x is 3x. 3 times 4 is 12, and we'll rewrite the rest of the equation. We need y by itself to be in slope-intercept form, so I'm going to add 2 
to both sides to get y equals 3x plus 14. This is in point slope form. If that's what it's asked for, this is how you're going to leave it. But if it asks for slope intercept form, it is going to be in this form right here. So the last example, again, you have to start by doing the distributive property. 1 half x minus 3. And I'll rewrite the rest. I need y by itself, so I have to subtract the 1. So in slope intercept form, it would be y equals 1 half x minus 4 because a minus negative 3 minus 1 is a negative 4. And that's it.